having OCD just sucks so much and people don't get it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Layden. I'm a model and I have OCD. So I mainly do commercial modeling, which is print and social media and kind of the things you see in magazines. I decided to get into modeling because I was told that I probably couldn't with my OCD. And I was like, I'm gonna try. I was first diagnosed with OCD when I was about three. My parents noticed that I was crying a lot. I was not really able to function very well on my own. Having a little panic attack, so that's fun. And it was really hard to see all of my friends being able to like run around and play and not really have any anxiety. And there I was trying to do these same things, but it took about 20 times the effort. Kept having these like extreme anxieties, even at like three, four years old. So I started doing therapy at about five, I believe. And I was told I was never really gonna be able to live alone or go to college or anything like that. OCD presents itself in such a wide range of ways. Misconception that a lot of people have is that it's only about cleaning, but it's really, really not. And I've actually never had that. I have it manifest more as ruminations in my head and just overthinking, overanalyzing. When I was younger, it was obviously very visible and compulsions. I had a lot of trouble in school because I would be doing constant rituals and have a lot of anxiety just doing basic tasks, repetitive behaviors, and I was doing tapping, which is a common thing you do in OCD, which is kind of a ritual. I still have little ones that I just kind of let slide. Like when I enter a room, I always enter with my right foot. And I just kind of let myself have that. So a day for me usually is waking up, taking my medicine, drinking a lot of water, Taking medicine has been really necessary, but I've also struggled with feeling extremely guilty taking it because I want to be able to defeat it myself. And I've adjusted my thinking a lot and accepted that, you know, medicine is okay and it's actually something that can greatly just make your brain more stable. Sitting in bed and trying to deep breathe because in the morning I'm usually pretty anxious. I try to do yoga every day because that just helps kind of get all of my junk mail in my head, out of my body. Constantly thinking about like trying to eat as much as I can because I get so anxious that I completely forget or it's really hard to eat sometimes and that's something I've struggled with a lot. Also really hard to eat when you're panicky, so I have to go go squeezes. And Laura bars. Usually I have a job sometime during the day, so I prep myself. I don't usually have a lot of ticks, but I do have a few and it's like always in the morning when i'm doing my skincare getting ready stuff as hard as i've tried and worked to get rid of all of them there's a few that i don't really have the energy to push away okay so i've always had a weird thing with having to have things start in my right hand so whenever i get like any sort of product or something that i'm doing in the morning i always start with my right hand and put it on my left hand i go in my car before i shoot and i calm myself down i do a lot of deep breathing techniques then I go into the shoot. A lot of times I will tell the photographer that I have OCD and that I potentially can get a brush on my chest because I just get anxious. People ask about it, they're like, oh my God, what's on your chest? And then obviously I get more self-conscious. I am very thankful to have some really great makeup artists that can cover it up and they're pretty receptive. If I get a rash, we address it and allow me to like have a minute of space, which has been awesome to like be able to say I need space and I need just a second to calm myself and realign myself before we shoot again. And most photographers have been really, really great about that, which I'm super appreciative of. But in general, I've had pretty positive experiences, which I'm really thankful for. Then I go into the shoot, do my thing, come out, usually a little bit anxious. So I give myself again, some time to deep breathe and think about everything I've done. Usually I have a bar right away. Meal in a bar, yay. If I don't have a shoot, it's a little harder for me because I really like having scheduled things. But if I don't have a shoot, I usually do other work like I make music or I do art or something to keep my mind busy. For me, going outside and going on walks has been super helpful because it really pulls me out of my head and makes me realize that not everything is in my head and there's so much more of a world out there. I'm really obsessed with my water. It's kind of a security thing for me, so I drink a lot of water before bed. At nighttime, I turn on my little white noise machine and it makes this little projector of lights on top of my room, which I love and it makes me feel like I'm in a little cave in a cocoon, but it makes me feel a little safe. I try to do more deep breathing, try some meditation. Sleep has been a very difficult thing for me, especially with my OCD. I dream about my fears a lot. 
and that has been very, very hard on me. I recently was able to talk to a sleep doctor, so it's been a lot of figuring out the right medicine, figuring out the right sleep time, and that has helped me kind of get onto a better schedule of sleep, which has in turn helped my anxiety a ton. One of the things I've always liked to do is to challenge myself on things that people say I can't do because I have OCD. And one of those is modeling. Getting in front of a camera is like the opposite of what someone would think someone with OCD would do. So modeling kind of requires you to be out there, to look really confident, to be, you know, really able to just jump in and do anything. And with OCD, it's kind of the opposite because I, for example, overanalyze everything I've ever done. And in modeling, you kind of have to just push that all aside and I think that's maybe why I like it is that I was able to compartmentalize and put my anxiety in a corner and then when I went and do the actual physical shoots I get a release but I analyze to the extreme to the extreme until I get to the actual shoot before modeling I usually think about where my hair looks like what I'm going to do for poses how I'm going to stand what the camera is going to look like and where I'm going to be in front of the camera I like think every little thing out so I've kind of just learned to push through that and you know being in front of a camera especially was something I never thought I would ever do and I finally got to a point where I was like you know what this is who I am if I get anxious and I have a rash that's just gonna happen and that's okay coming from a place where I was told that I wouldn't be able to live alone to go to college to make my own path by myself and now being able to say that I make music and I model and I live alone full-time is something I am so incredibly proud of. And OCD will always be a part of me and it's always gonna be something that I'm gonna work with every day and gonna have ups and downs, but I'm really proud of myself for pushing through and making it to a place where I'm stable enough to live on my own. That is something that I'm really, really proud of, is living with it, being able to fully live my own life, push through when people told me that I wasn't gonna be able to, and create something that I never thought in a million years would be possible. Anxiety is something that you deal with but it's not going to make or break your life and that's a lesson that I learned that really really helped me. So I hope that my story can show you that you can kind of go after your dreams and make anything possible.